Hey everyone, Laura here with Rags to Rugs, and today we're going to make a toothbrush rug, also known as an Amish knot rug, also known as a Navajo knot rug, also known as a coil rug. So many different names for this one technique that we're going to make today. Now we are going to make an 18 by 24 inch oval rug that looks exactly like this. This exact rug. Isn't that pretty? I can't wait to use this uh, in my home. This is the rug we're going to make. Now, if you're going to follow along with us, you're going to need some supplies. So obviously you're going to need some fabric. What you're going to need is approximately six yards of fabric, two yards for your running strips and four yards for your working strips. And I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. In addition, we recommend that you have one or two jumbo safety pins. Now I'm going to come back to this as well and share with you why one or two. We also would like for you to gather up some shears, preferably some shears that have got sharp points. With this method of making rugs, you're going to be connecting a lot of fabric strips and those sharp tip shears are going to come in really handy. Also, we'd like for you to, to round up three long straight pins, not the little short ones, but these nice long ones. You're going to appreciate this in your rug making. In addition, we'd like for you to round up five markers. Now, you know, if you've watched any of our other videos, we always recommend the one inch spring loaded hair pretties that you can pick up pretty much anywhere. We still love these. But just recently, I found some crochet markers on a company called Madame Sew. And we're gonna provide a link for you at the bottom of this video. These are awesome. They're about a quarter inch. This is the first time I've tried them. I think I'm gonna like them. But if you've already invested in some of these, the one inch, that's perfectly okay. In addition, we'd like for you to obviously pick up your needle or, or, or have a needle. Now, the toothbrush needle that I'm going to be using uh, was a gift from Alana DuPont. Alana is one of our friends on, from our website that I've met. Um, and she shared this with me as a gift all the way from Spain. And I've been using it ever since. It's my favorite toothbrush tool. I love it. Um, thank you, Alana. She bought it from, um, she sent a gift card and she bought it from a company in Spain called Wonder Loops. So if you don't have one of these fancy, fancy ones like Alana shared with me, you can do it in the true to, uh, toothbrush style rugs um, where the ladies of previous generations and whatever would take a, take a toothbrush that was worn out from the bathroom and they would pet it right at the bristles, sand it down with a utility knife and sandpaper, elongate the hole in their toothbrush uh, to make room for your fabric. And that's what's called a toothbrush tool or needle. So um, I want to use in this demonstration this one just because it's kind of authentic to um, the toothbrush rugs and I, I want to pay tribute to Alana. But if you don't have the toothbrush that you've made yourself or one of these beautiful tools, you can also use, as I shared right here, a safety pin. It works just as well. So don't feel like you have to run out and get anything. Um, last is the mat. Now, many of you have reached out to me asking when we would be uploading a video on how to make toothbrush rugs. Because honestly, what I'm hearing is you're frustrated with other videos. You feel like there could be a better technique. And I feel like what we're gonna share with you is a better technique. Um, you're gonna be making these rugs on the flat. In other words, I recommend that you do these on a dining room table. You can do it on a card table if you'd like, but it works best if you do them in the flat and not as other people have recommended where you're doing it in the air, hold, using your foot to secure the runner strip. Uh, this is gonna work a whole lot better. And if so, I recommend um, investing in a mat. Now, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on it, Consider a cork bulletin board or just the cork pieces, the 12 by 12 pieces that you can buy to put on your wall. Um, these work great. A lot of times you can pick up one of these at the Goodwill or Salvation Army stores, or maybe you have one in your house. This works great. You could also consider the interlocking mat. Um, this is one that I got from uh, Knitter's Pride. This is Quilter's blocking mats. There's quite a few of them in the package. These are also used in like kindergarten classrooms or in nurseries because it's a soft pad for your flooring. But these work great. And many of you may already have these because if you've um, purchased any of our kits from our company to make our twine 
um, ornaments or whatever, you may already have one from that you can use from us. I will be using in this demonstration another uh, product that I found on Madame So's website. I absolutely love that company, and this is something that I found just recently. Uh, it's a large steam mat, and it came with a smaller one and an iron resting pad. We're not going to be using that today, but if you are a quilter, you might really enjoy this so that you can use it for both your toothbrush as well as your quilting projects. So I'm going to set that aside. Now, I promise you I'd also like to come back to the fabric portion of this demonstration. Now, when this is what is called, this, we are going to be using this solid broadcloth for our running strip. Keep in mind, just like a racetrack, the running strip is, goes around and around and around your rug, giving you the foundation for your toothbrush rug. You could use any fabric you want. We will be using this solid uh, broad closet. This is our uh, bluegrass green, a continuous bead roll of uh, fabric. We're gonna be using this for our running strip. It's wonderful because it is continuous, and when you are working with toothbrush rugs, there's a lot of connecting of strips. So at least for the running strip, we're not gonna be doing any connecting of strips, but you, you can use whatever fabric you want. Keep in mind, however, that whatever fabric you choose for the running strip, it will show in your rug. So keep that in mind when you're coordinating fabrics and colors. We will also, for our working strip, be using a batik. And at the present day, the, the date of this video, we, we have this particular one in stock. I think it coordinates beautifully with the, the broad plot that we're gonna use for our running strip. Uh, what's great about batiks, it's the same on both sides, which is really, really cool. Now you can cut your strips, whatever width you want. You can, these are gonna be two inch strips that we're working with with this project, but if you would prefer narrower, one and a half inch strips, or wider, two and a half, or even three inch strips, that's okay. The pattern's not gonna change up at all. The wider the strips, the more durable your rug. For today's um, demonstration, we're gonna be using two inch strips. I recommend that you keep the strips relatively short throughout this. There is a lot of connecting of strips as I've shared, but no more than 36 inches or they're gonna kind of get in your way. So anyway, so these are the things you're gonna to need to round up for the rug. Um, hopefully this demonstration is gonna set all your frustrations to these and we're gonna get started right away. Okay, so we're gonna get started making our first toothbrush rug. And as you can see, we're just zooming in on the technique that I'm gonna teach with you. You're not gonna see me, but you're gonna see the fabric. We're hoping that we can get it up close and personal so that it's very, very clear to you. So again, this beautiful broadcloth solid is what we're gonna be using for our runner strip. And we're going to add to it then this beautiful print batik. And the way we're gonna start is we're gonna lay the batik on top of the runner strip to connect our fabric strips folding it over about a half an inch and making a quarter inch clip right in the center. Open those strips back up, lay your, your working strip on top of your runner strip, align the slits, find the end, and feed it up through the center. Now one thing I want you to note at this point is that when you are connecting those fabric strips, don't leave it like this. If it doesn't feed all the way through, turn it over, and you'll see this V right here. Lay your thumb on the tip of that V and gently roll it into the slit, giving it a short little tug, and you'll feel that connect. That is a durable connection. If you leave that V open, it's not gonna be durable at that point. Now, at this point, what I want you to do is I want you to lay your fabric out so that it, the knot is a little bit left of center, and we're gonna use one of our straight pins to secure it right there. We're now going to make a, a small little C right on top of this runner strip. Again, this is your foundational fabric. We're gonna be using this fabric to connect our working strip. Make a little C right there. Can you see that? And we're going to use our tool now. We're gonna fold it at a kind of a, a V right there, feed it through our tool. And we're going to, now, we're gonna insert our tool right underneath the working, or the runner strip, this one here, and on top of your working strip. 
Now this is where it gets kind of good. Use your index finger and your thumb and secure this down. Pull the, the tool through gently and you've just completed your first stitch. This is the same as a blanket stitch if you've ever done any embroidery. We're going to do nine more of those. Again, form a C with your tool underneath your, uh, your runner on top of your working strip. Pull it through, all the way through. Adjust it just a little bit. And I'd like for you to keep this, this uh, runner evident when you're doing this. And again, securing it with my index finger and my thumb. Pull that needle through. Adjust it just a tiny bit. Again, we want to keep just enough of a gap to see that runner. Again, securing it index finger and thumb. Pull it through. Adjust it just a little bit. And we're going to find another uh, straight pin and we're going to secure it right there. As you can see, with this technique, you're going to be adding a lot of fabric strips. So I'm going to move my, my tool down just a little bit. I'm going to find another strip and we're going to do the same thing again and again and again. Adding the new strip on top, folding it over a half an inch, making that quarter inch slit right there, open them back up. The new strip is going to go on the existing strip, align the slits, find the end, feed it up from the bottom, give it a gentle tug. If it doesn't feed through immediately, you're going to turn it over and see that V. Roll it with your thumb into the slit and give it a gentle tug and we're ready to go. And all you have to do now is slide your toothbrush tool down just a little bit and we're going to continue on. We've now put the C on top of your runner right here. Feed it up from the bottom. Secure it with your index finger and your thumb. Feed it through. Adjust it just a tiny bit if necessary and we're going to start again and again and again. We're going to do 10 of these with this rug that we're going to make, this 18 by 24 rug. Make sure to keep those stitches nice and open and I'd like for you to be able to clearly see the runner strip underneath. That's the letter C underneath, secure it, pull it through. Adjust it just a tiny bit. So far we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to do three more. Eight. Nine. And the last one, ten. All right, we've got 10 now, and what we're going to do is we're going to pick this up and we're going to turn it and we're going to come back down that other side. Position those, those straight pins wherever you need them to secure your work as you're working it. Feed that runner strip down the side of your rug and we're going to start working these stitches from the other side. I'm going to take another straight pin, I'm going to put it right here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to come down and we are going to actually pick up both runners right here and right here. Insert your hook here right underneath, underneath that runner as well, on top of your working strip right here. Secure it just like we did before and pull it all the way through. We're going to continue on. Here's the next one. You can see the, the, the blue fabric underneath this one as well. Secure it and keep on going. I'm going to turn this just a little bit. Hopefully you can see it clearly. Here's the next one. You can see just a glimpse of that, that beautiful bluegrass green fabric. Underneath this one, underneath this one, there's our letter C. Secure it, pull it through, and continue on down the whole length of this starter rug. This is a whole lot easier, I promise you, than trying to do this in the air and trying to um, keep your stitches consistent. Now that just fell out, but it's no big deal to kind of just make a quick little V right there, feed it through. We are going to get, we are kind of getting short on fabric, so at this point I'm going to go ahead and add another fabric strip. Moving my tool down close to my work, I'm going to pick up another piece of fabric. Connect it, laying the new one on top, folding it over half an inch, quarter inch slit, open it up, align the slits, find the end, feed it up through. There's
there's that V. I'm gonna lay my thumb gently on the top and feed it into the slit and give it a little tug. And we're ready to continue on. It doesn't have to be a whole big process. Find that next one, which is right here, easy to see with that bluegrass green. There's my letter C. Secure it, pull it through, and we're gonna get down to the bottom of his. And when we reach that very last stitch, instead of just doing one, we're gonna do three, because we need to, remember that racetrack I told you about? We need to round the corner on that racetrack. To ease tension, we're gonna put two more stitches in that last one. Here's that, the bluegrass green underneath this one, on top of our working strip here. Secure it, pull it through, and we're gonna do the last one here, which is right here. Here's, here's that initial one underneath both, letter C, and give it a tug. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick this up, and what I want for you to do Continue to move these pins around wherever you feel like you need to have them to make sure your tension is going to continue. This is again your runner that runs around that racetrack. Let's go ahead and feed that over to the side. Insert your hook a second time in that same space. I'm going to actually put another pin oops, threw that one across the room. I'm going to put another one right here. That's okay, Lisa. I didn't mean to hit you. Um, Okay, so we're gonna insert our hook again in the same space. We're gonna do two more. Here's our letter C. Secure it. This is the, the actual spot right here that people get frustrated because they don't know what to do when they make that turn. So keeping this as simple as possible, again, here's our runner coming back, back down the other side. Our working strip here, insert our hook right here and we're gonna do one more in this space right here. And I can promise you from this point on, if it's at all frustrating, even with this technique, it's gonna get a whole lot better. We're gonna turn our work another quarter inch turn, and I think you can already see how gorgeous this rug is. You can see how consistent the stitches are. You can see how beautifully shaped it already is. We're gonna pick this up now, and I'm gonna move it to my larger station. The small one comes in really handy, but now we need a little bit bigger working space. Just go ahead and just kind of tuck those back in so it feels nice and comfortable. And we're gonna come back down the other side. Again, here is your runner coming down the side, running around that racetrack. Our working strip, we've got plenty of fabric still on it. We're gonna insert our hook here in this space, right here, underneath that runner and on top of our working strip, forming that C, securing it with our fingers, adjusting it just a tiny bit, keep those stitches nice and open. The very next stitch is very obvious now, it's right here. Under it, under the runner, on top of your working strip, give it a little tug, adjust it if you need to, got a little pin right in there, and we're going to keep on going down. The one thing about toothbrush rugs or Amish knot rugs or whatever you want to call them is that there is a lot of stopping and starting with adding new strips. And again, if you want to keep that time minimal, you might consider a continuous feed at least for your runner. It's going to keep it a whole lot easier. We've already run out of fabric again. I've got some strips ready here. Again, keep those strips lengths shorter simply because they kind of get in the way if you don't um, keep them rather short. I would recommend at least one yard or less. Roll it over, there's that V. Gently use your thumb to roll it into the slit, give it a gentle tug, feed your tool down to the end, and we'll continue on. Here's our next stitch. It's very clear now. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to do the same thing as we did before. And you can always kind of adjust that runner if you need to. Here's the next stitch very clearly right here. Form that letter C. Hold it down with your thumb and forefinger. Adjust it just a tiny bit. This method, in my opinion, keeps this whole process so much cleaner, 
so much more manageable, so much more easy to enjoy this process instead of, as some people, not to be, uh, I don't want to sound negative to some people's methods, but if you keep this in the flat, you're going to enjoy it so much. Okay, I'm going to take this out just for a minute, and we're going to turn our work so that a quarter turns so you can clearly see what we're going to do next. Now, without even guessing, you can see where the stitch is most on center on end. If you had imaginary yardstick straight up through the center, here's this very last stitch. Go ahead and use your straight pins to secure your work, random, random locations. And now in this stitch right here, right here, the stitch most on center on end, if you guided that up with imaginary yardstick, you can see this stitch right here. We're going to do three stitches in there because any time... This, this will allow you to ease tension on this turn, just like if it was a racetrack. Put one, two, and we're going to do one more in here. And just like before, we're going to turn our work, and we're going to do the same thing on the other end. That's not to say that we're going to do this from here on out, because there is a pattern that we're going to move to here in just a little bit. But for right now, once again, we're going to add another strip real quickly so that we don't have to stop midstream. Fold it over, quarter inch slit, open it up, align the slits, find the end, feed it up through, give it a tug if it doesn't feed all the way through, roll it over with your thumb into the slit, give it a tug, and we're ready to continue going. Connecting your fabric strips does not have to take a whole lot of time. Do this down in here to secure that, and now we're going to move on to the next we are just in this one, now we need to move on to this next stitches, which is right in here. You can see the stitch very clearly. We're going to form our C underneath that runner, which is right here. Secure it, pull it through, adjust it if you need to, and move on to the next. that next stitch very very clearly now as you move through the, the this this whole process of making your rug those stitches are going to become more and more clear to you you won't but there's no guesswork just that runner if you need to it's just there hanging out providing a foundation for your rug you can manipulate it however you need to See how fast this is going now? You can replay this video from the start as many times as you want. And I can assure you that with, with practice, let me move this up just a little bit here and see how easily I was able to do that. These little straight pins work out great. But it helps you, and you can see too how this beautiful shape of this rug. Again, once again, I'm running out of fabric, so once again, as many times as is necessary, we're going to continue to add fabric to our working strip. You can see how fast you can add strips once you have a little bit of practice. Need our tool all the way down to the end, and we'll continue on. We're almost to the end. And we're going to do once more, we're going to add we're going to find the stitch that's most on center on end. If you guided a yardstick down the center, here is that one stitch that's most on center on end. And in that stitch, we're going to do three total stitches. I'm going to turn my work. We're going to work on the side. Secure it with those pins. See how valuable those pins are to keep your work contained. And in this stitch that's most on center on end, that's going to be important uh, terminology moving forward with the pattern that I'm going to share with you. We're going to insert our hook three times in that space. That was one, two, and the last one, three. And we're going to come down this side by turning our work a quarter turn one more time, doing exactly the same thing. At that point, 
we're going to introduce a pattern that's going to be the best thing that you ever learned. So we're going to come down this side again. It's very obvious now where those stitches are. There's one. Move down to the next one. See this one right here? Under our runner. Secure it and through. Adjust if you need to. Next one is right here. Here. Keep on going here. The very first rug I made in the toothbrush style was 37 years ago. And I know that because I made it for my daughter's nursery. There were no books. There was no internet that many years ago. There was no instructions. So I kind of taught myself how to do this method. I used up some Honey Bunny fabric that was left over from making her bedding and her rocking chair pads and her curtains and everything for that firstborn. You know how you go crazy. I had just enough fabric to make a rug for her nursery for beside her crib. And we still have that rug today. I'll show you here at the very end of this video, hopefully, if I don't forget. And the cool part of it is, is that those rugs, these heirloom rugs that you make out of fabric or whatever you choose to use it, sheets or whatever, they last a very, very long time. And so we're proud to still have that same rug that I made for her. I'm gonna turn my work now just a little bit. Now there's one more stitch right here before we reach the stitch right here that's most on center on end. I use those trusty little straight pins, secure this to my mat. You can see how valuable this mat is when you're working your rug. I'm going to do this one here on the, on the corner. Same thing, secure that letter C with your fingers, and we've reached the very last stitch. And again, this location only, we're going to put three stitches in there. Yeah, three stitches in here to ease the tension as we make this turn. It's called increasing. Do one more right here. And at this point, we're going to change up things just a little bit. So, from now on, I want to show you, I want to teach you a new technique um, of making these rugs. This is a pattern that many of you, if you've seen our oval um, YouTube video on this channel, you know that I have a special uh, pattern that I use, and we're going to use this as well. The pattern that we teach for our crochet rugs is the same pattern as we teach for our toothbrush rugs. And so I'm going to teach you that pattern now. Okay, so we took a quick pause just because I wanted to kind of review the pattern. And again, if you've watched our oval um, crocheted uh, video, we referenced in that that you can also use that video for your toothbrush rugs or your Amish knot rugs. And so if you recall, this is the actual pattern. It's kind of a blown up version of what is in our video that you can purchase. And by, for reference, you can also just purchase this cheat sheet card that we've got available. And many of you, we have orders for this every single day. You can go on the website. We'll provide a link that you can get this. And this section right here is that cheat sheet, which is, this is just a blown up version. So using that in reference, if you recall, the first two rounds, the only difference from, we came up and down both sides, but on the end, we added three stitches. And what you do on one end of your rug, you need to do on your other end, correct? This is all in review on that oval video that we've already got on our channel. Round two, we did the same thing. All we did was we added three stitches on the end, that stitch most on center on end, and on the other end, the same thing. We're ready now to move on to round three. And though this seems a little bit confusing to you, when, I, I want you to review with me this is that what is in red on our pattern and on the smaller version of our cheat sheet is that what is in red is always going to be the stitch most on center on end. And we're going to use our wonderful markers to mark that. We're also going to use our safety pin. That safety pin I told you I wanted you to, to round up. We're going to put a safety pin on one end, on the opposite end where your hook is right now. We're just going to put that safety pin anywhere on that end. That is going to be your cue that from now on, as you are approaching 
that safety pin heading down in that direction, that's going to be your cue that you're starting a new round. In this case, we're starting round three. That and, we're going to mark, use our crochet markers, and we're going to mark that stitch, which is most on center on end, with a marker. Reading right of that red number one is a one, and then there's a two. Where there is a one, you're going to insert your hook one time. Whereas where there is a two from now on, you're going to mark, you're going to insert your hook a second time to relieve tension, or otherwise known as an increase. So reading right of center, here's the red number one. To the right of that is a one, to the right of that is a two, which means we're going to insert our hook two times there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to read left of center. Again, here is our red number one, the stitch most on center on end. To the left of that is a one, to the left of that is a two. We're always going to mark our twos with a marker. We can then remove this stitch, which is your red number one. So from now on, all we have to do is pay attention to where your markers are. As you move down this side, you, you uh, reach this marker, you know that confidently you're going to insert your hook a second time in that space. One, 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 and here's your other marker, two stitches there. Again, as we're rounding this corner, we need to relieve tension or increase here and here. Beyond that, no guesswork. Okay, so we took a little mini pause just to make sure that we had everything situated. And if you recall, we put a safety pin on this end. As we approach that safety pin, we are starting a new round. And we moved our line marker on our pattern down to round three already. So what we're going to do now is we are going to just do one stitch all the way down this side until we reach this, this marker right here. We don't even have to think at this point. All we have to do is continue to work down that side. Once we reach the marker, if you remember, we're going to insert our hook a second time in that location. There's one. As simple as that. There's our letter C underneath the, the working strip and the runner. Secure it with your finger. It helps so much doing that. Down to the next stitch, which is right here. Secure that letter C. Down the side, you can always tug on that runner just a little bit to adjust it. Down to the next stitch. You guys, this is so much fun. This is such an easy technique. All you're, all you're going to do is continue the same thing. The most important part is establishing where to add those extra stitches to relieve tension. That's where people struggle. So incorporating my technique, this special pattern that I teach, here's that next one right here. There's our letter C. Pull it through. Move on down to the next one. Our letter C. The hardest part when you're working on your te the toothbrush rugs is if you work in the air, it's kind of hard. Whereas you work in the flat, you can see your rug progressing and see how beautifully shaped this is. If you work in the flat, you'll always accomplish that. If you work in the air, you cannot maintain your tension. So this is a far better way, in my opinion anyway, of making your toothbrush rugs and always being assured that you can tug on this runner strip just a little bit. Now the very next stitch, we're right here, the very next stitch, there's our marker. I'm going to remove that. We're going to insert our hook first and then a second time in that space because we're rounding this curve and we need to relieve tension just a little bit by increasing. Inserting my hook a second time there. Okay, we're going to pick this up. We're going to move it just a little bit. Hopefully you can still see this in the video. And now all we have to do is continue around until we've reached that, that next marker. One. See how fast these stitches can be if you, once you get this method down. I'm running out of fabric. I'm going to move my hook down to the base. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to grab another stitch or another fabric strip. Fold it over. Make our clip. Open it up. Lay the new strip on top of the existing. Find the end. Feed it up. 
give it a little tug. There's that V on the back. With my thumb, roll it into the slit, move our needle down to the end, and we're gonna continue on. We have not reached this other marker, so we're just gonna continue on until we do. It's one, and now this very next stitch is gonna be our marker. I'm gonna turn it just a little bit so you can clearly see. We're gonna move our running strip down the side of our rug. We've reached the marker, we'll remove it, set it aside, and we're gonna insert our hook two times in that space. And you can already see that the distance between this stitch and this stitch is quite a bit. So you can almost already tell that if we weren't to add another stitch right there, where our rug would most likely buckle. That's why this pattern is so awesome because it recognizes where specifically you need to add another stitch to relieve tension. All right, we're gonna move it again. We're gonna secure it with our, our straight pins. And we're gonna come down this other side. Now before we do, we need to, I should have done this before. We need to mark our pattern on this end. Again, following this pattern, the stitch most on center on end, we're gonna put a marker. Reading right of center is a one and a two, which now you know means we're gonna insert our hook a second time there. Reading left of center, here's the center line. There's a one and then a two. We're gonna put a marker there. We can now remove the stitch, the marker that's most on center on end, and we're gonna come back down this other side. Secure it with our straight pins all the way down. Got a lot of straight pins all of a sudden. And we're gonna continue on until we reach the marker down on this end. We know that it's this the the second side of this pattern because our, mark, our safety pin is on this end. As we approach that safety pin, we're starting a new round, which we are not just yet. So we're in that stitch. Now we're gonna move on down to the next stitch. You can clearly see it. Oops, I made that wrong here. Right there. Secure it, pull it through, right here. There's our letter C. Secure that stitch. Adjust the runner if you need to. There's our next stitch. See how clear they are now? There's no doubt where those next stitches are now. Here's our next one. And here's our next one. Here's our next stitch. And our next one, and we're getting really close to that next marker. Don't even have to think with this pattern. You just know confidently where you're going to need to increase to assure that you're going to have the best tension, which is going to assure you the best shape, that your rug is going to lay perfectly flat. And here's our marker right here. We're going to remove it, set it aside. We know that we need to add a second stitch there. And if we don't, our rug is going to buckle and you're not gonna like the way it's shaped. We're gonna turn our rug a quarter of an inch turn. We're gonna reposition those pins because that's what's helping us secure our rug. And we're gonna work on this end now. Now, we don't have another marker until here. So right here, here's our next stitch under the runner. That runner's that foundation. That's what's securing those stitches to the next one, it's right here. Adjust that runner if you need to, and right here. We're gonna add another strip of fabric. It doesn't take long at all to add these fabric strips, but again, keep those fabric strips three yards or less because otherwise they get to be a little bit bulky. Feed my tool down to the end. And we're going to continue on. We're not quite to the next marker. All right, we're going to remove this marker. We're going to turn our wick just a little bit here. So we put two, one, 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 and at this point we're going to put two more right in here because we need to, that's where our marker was, and we need to add another one 
to control the tension rounding the bend on our rug. This is going to assure that your rug is always going to be perfectly shaped. Coming down the side here, here's our runner, and we don't, we're just going to continue on. But before we do, we need to turn our work because, again, here is our safety pin, our wonderful safety okay. pin. So we are approaching the safety pin coming down this side of our rug. Here's our safety pin. That's our clue that we're starting a new round. I moved our line marker on our video, uh, our cheat sheet here to round four already. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to mark the stitch most on center round end. In my pattern, it's always going to be the red number one. We're going to mark the stitch here because if you drew an imaginary line, that's the stitch that's most on center on end. To the right of that is a one. To the right of that is a two. We're going to mark that two. We're always going to mark your twos. The next one is a one and then a two. We'll mark that stitch as well because we need to make sure that when we approach these markers here, we're going to insert our hook a second time. Now reading left of center, here's our marker, the center line, most on center on end. To the left of that one is a one and then a two, a one and then a two. The ones, you're just going to put one stitch in those. At this point now we can remove this one, which is the red number one, the stitch most on center on end. And you can now continue on without even having to think about the pattern. When you reach this one, we're going to insert our hook a second time, as well as this one, this one, and this one. And then we're going to repeat the same pattern on the other end of our rug. Okay, so we took another little pause just to kind of reposition our rug. And I don't know if you can notice this, but look how beautiful this rug shape is. By working on the table, by positioning it with these straight pins, by using the pattern so that you don't even have to think about it, your rug will turn out perfect each and every time. Right now, all I know is that I need to do single stitches all the way down the side until I reach my first marker. So we're just going to continue on as we did before. There's your little C. You've secured it with your fingers. You've gained a little bit of a tug if you need to to adjust. Find that next stitch, which is very clearly evident. Pull it through, adjust it just a tiny bit. Don't ever pull those stitches too tight. You want to keep them nice and open. From this point on, I can assure you, your rug is going, is going to come together so fast. And in an evening, you could feasibly make a rug that's considerably larger than this 18 by 24. Keep working on down the side. Pulling those through, the next stitch is right here, under it, under the runner, on top of the working strip, and here we go to the next one. We're almost to our first marker, and now obviously you, what you know to do at that point, that stitch that you've marked clearly with a, a, a marker, is we're going to insert our hook a second time right here. Very, very easy. Never have to think about it. You're just going to follow along with my cheat sheet. And I will tell you where you need to add another stitch to allow your rug to lay perfectly shaped, to be perfectly flat, and you never have to worry about your rug buckling as with other patterns. Okay, so we've put two stitches here. The next stitch, is, if you remember, is a one. That means we're going to insert a hook just one time in that next space which is right here, pull it through, and immediately we've got another two right here. We're going to take that marker out, and we're going to insert our hook two times in that space. Why? Because if you didn't, your rug is going to buckle right there, and it's not going to lay flat. I'm going to lay, add another strip of fabric quickly to my work. Open that up, align the slits, find the end, pull it through. Just a little bit by putting your thumb right there at the point of that B and giving it a quick tug. Pull your tool to the end, and we're going to continue on.
until we reach a marker. The marker is always going to be your cue that you need to add another stitch in that space. We're not quite there yet, but the next stitch will be that. We're going to remove that marker, set it aside, and in this space, we're going to add two stitches. One, and two. No guesswork. I can continue on. We're right here. This next stitch is going to be a one. And guess what? We just reached another crochet marker. We're going to remove it. We're going to insert our hook two times in this space. And it's now time to mark the other end of this pattern because what you do on one end, you have to always remember to do at the other end. Okay, so we're now at the second half of round four. And if you remember, the first thing that we always do is mark the stitch most on center on end. So we're going to do that right here. There's that red number one. To the right of that is a one. To the right of that is our two. We always need to mark our two, which means we're going to insert a hook a second time there. A one is next, which is here, and a two is next, is here. The next thing we always want to do is read left of center. Here's the stitch most on center on end, marked with this red little marker. To the left is a one, then a two, a one, and then a two. We can now remove the stitch most on center on end. I'm going to turn my work back around facing me, and we're going to continue down this side. I'm going to use my little trusty little straight pins to secure that to my mat. I don't even have to think now. We're going to lay that runner along the side of our rug, and all we're going to do is do single stitches all the way down. If you're an embroiderer, you probably recognize this stitch as a blanket stitch. That's simply all it is, is a simple embroidery blanket stitch. Under and over. Adjusting the runner as you as you want until we reach this crochet marker. Keeping those stitches relatively nice and open. It's kind of cool to combine embroidery with our toothbrush rugs, isn't it? And we're almost already to our marker. There's one more stitch, and then we know that marker is telling us that, hey, we need to add another stitch right here. So we're going to do that. Here's a stitch. One more. Goes here. Continuing on, we've got a one, and we've already reached another marker. Removing it, we know we're going to insert our hook a second time in that location. One and two. Why? Because if you don't, your rug is not going to lay flat, it will not be perfectly shaped, and most important, it will buckle right there, and we don't want that to happen. We're going to add another strip at this place, folding it over half an inch, quarter inch slit, align those slits, beat it up from the bottom, Pull it all the way through, give it a gentle nudge, and you're ready to continue on. Now we just did that two, which is right here. We're going to continue on. All these, these don't have a marker, so that means they're just going to be single stitches. And again, if you want a printed version of this cheat sheet, we have these available on the website. We'll provide a link at the bottom of this video that you can Get these, and they're they're really nice printed cardstock. On the front is mobile. On the back is the round. You can use these for your toothbrush rugs. You can use them for your crocheted rugs, and you can carry them around in your purse or your satchel, and they'll always be there for you when you're uh, making your rugs. This one's just going to be a single. We've just reached another crochet marker. Remove that. And we're going to insert a hook two times in this location. Now, if you look at this rug that we're making very quickly in this video, you'll see how beautifully shaped this is by, cro or by uh, 
creating this on a flat surface. There's no denying the fact that this is an absolutely stunning rug already. Now, without doing this on this video, the next round, round five, as you know now, the first thing that you're going to do is mark your pattern on the opposite end, the same end that your safety pin is right here. And you're going to mark that first, most, the stitch most on center on end. You're going to read right of center with a one, which is right here, a two, a marker goes there, and a two, a marker is going to go right there. You'll then read left of center. Here's your center line. Left of center is a one, and then a two, and a two, and you remove that stitch most on center on end. Remembering, of course, that what you do on this end, you have to do on the other end. Always align your, your line marker, whether you use a paper clip or whatever on your small cheat sheet to remind you where you're at, but that's the pattern that you're going to use from now on. Those markers are always going to tell you exactly where to increase with those number twos. Even though the pattern may get a little daunting as you move through the steps, it's always going to be the same thing. The stitch most on center on end, and then those twos are where you want to mark them with your markers. And you're always going to have the most perfect, beautifully shaped rug. Okay, so we just finished round four. We've marked our pattern for round five following the pattern that I shared with you. You can continue on your own for the duration of this pattern, or stay tuned for part two and we'll work through this pattern together. So, was that fun? I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that this is the technique you're always going to use for your toothbrush, Amish knot rug, Navajo knot rug, coil rugs, whatever you want to call them, because honestly, making toothbrush rugs is as simple as can be. There's not a whole lot to it. But anyway, in the meantime, we've got a lot more videos that we're going to be posting to this channel, some really, really fun ones. I hope you stay in touch. I hope you subscribe. I hope you hit that bell so that you're going to get notifications every time that we add another video. And in the meantime, as always, make it a great day.